at our other finalists. Stay with us. Final score of match number three, Tammy Turner defeats Kim Adler 235 to 188. And now let's take a look at our sports cream other finalists. Always in the finals, Carol Giannotti and Tish Johnson. Sandra Jo Shirey, first amateur to win the national tournament in eighth, Vicki Steenson ninth. Pro titleists, Jackie Sellers in tenth, and Debbie McMullen won to wish her mom Peg a happy birthday. Last week's runner-up, Carol Norman and Dana Miller Mackey in thirteenth. And we want to apologize to Chrissy Stewart for no photo in 14th and Cheryl Daniels in 15th already won a title this year. You all know her, Anne Marie Dugan finishing up 16th, 92-93 Miami Herald Bowler of the Year, Sue Nydig. And the all-time leading money earner in 18th, Alita Sue and Dee Dee Davidson now in her 11th year on tour. Kim Kennedy having a great year, 20th, and Rachel Perez second year on tour, 21st. Joycey Davis in 22nd, she was the 89 Texas Woman Bowler of the Year and in 23rd, hey, Jan hits a couple steps up from the alternate last week. Sure is. And Dawn Thorkelson in 24th, she's in the Minneapolis Bowling Hall of Fame. And our last week winner, Lisa Wagner, is our alternate. All right, and coming up, it's our championship match, a former Team USA player now taking on a Team USA coach. Match of the Rocket City Challenge, Michelle Mullen and Tammy Turner about to battle it out here for the title. Michelle Mullen from Chicago, Illinois, the current Team USA coach. Matter of fact, she's going next week to coach the team in Denver, Colorado. Yes, she is for the Olympic Festival. She's opted not to bowl instead. Coming up through the nose, not the kind of shot you want to open up the championship match with. Now she's opted to start this match, which means she's going to finish and have all the pressure. I would assume she has a very good shot on lane 28. I don't know why she would want, this means Tammy's going to finish on lane 27, which is her good lane. So I don't, she either wasn't paying attention to that or Michelle feels she has a much better shot herself on lane 28. All right, she takes two. Opens up with nine now in frame number one. And as I said, lane 27, better for her. She has 10 strikes on that lane, only seven on 28, and also the one split on lane 28. And I don't know, here's 28 now. She definitely caught up 28 there uh, last match because she only had two strikes in her first match on that lane, and then she like hit it five times last game? She did. She, she wound up lining it up quite a bit, but she still is lined up on the other lane. You know, was making good shots on both lanes, actually, last game. High game this week, 279. A few 290s shot. That was the highest games. No 300s. And she doubles. <laughs> Trying to get that second national title. Tammy Turner won her first national title last year at the $50,000 Claremore Classic. And this lady right here has bowled very well in Claremore also. She finished second there this year, second there the year before. She lost to Tammy Turner. Yes, she did. She likes that center very much. So these two players have met one other time already in 95 for a title. Now Michelle's playing a little bit deeper or tighter inside than Tammy is, not quite cr crossing as many boards. Boy, that, very consistent. That's pretty interesting. You don't normally see the averages that close from year to year. And picks up the 4-7. Here's Michelle Start. Look at how she sits back. All of her weight is back, but her shoulders are actually tilted. See how she pushes her weight forward now? She has a five-step approach, pushes the ball on her second step. Kind of a medium backswing, about shoulder high. Very low finish position, really comes around the ball. She has a good, strong release. She's actually worked on that backswing. It's much higher than it was about a year to two years ago. Nine years on tour. I'm sure she's made a lot of changes in those nine years with her game. I know she's worked very hard in her mental game as well. She has three national titles. Tammy Turner right now trying for her second. Defeated Michelle, 246 to 207 in match play. You heard her say, not good. Now she knew that she pulled that shot left a target from the very beginning. 
It's amazing how you feel that when these players know it immediately. You know, a lot of the times you know it before that ball comes off your hand. And there's a few players out here that can stop themselves, but not very often. It's, it's kind of hard to do when you have the momentum going. One of the greats, Dick Weber, was always referred to as a, uh, a great foul line adjuster. He felt things going bad from the, the get-go. He could stop himself or just make that quick correction mm -hmm. right there at the line. Now, Tammy, you know, I talked to her about her goals, what her goals are now, and she said they're changing all the time. And basically, she said it's because she's learning what it is, what it takes to be out here. She said she had a dream since she was nine years old to be one of the best on tour, only now she realizes how hard it really is to be one of the best on tour. And she is one of the best right now. So Tammy and Jeff McCorvey, the general manager here at AMF Pen Pals, what a great time he put on for the ladies this week. It's the second year we've been to Huntsville, and hopefully we'll be back next year. And Timmy bowled in this tournament, and Did she, she, as a matter of fact, will be at that Olympic Festival bowling. She was the alternate, and uh, Lisa Vint could not bowl, so she'll be taking her spot. Well, good luck to Timmy from all of us out here. How did she fare in this event? Mm, it wasn't her best <laughs> performance. But it's nerve-wracking to get out there with the pros. It sure is. She, she tried very hard, and, and she definitely did not embarrass herself. She did a fine job. All right, Michelle Mullen trailing by nine, but she can take the lead by one with a strike here in the fifth frame. heard her yell hook ball you know she's a little bit confused and when she warmed up on this pair she was I asked her how they were for her and she she said they're very touchy I said you know do you have out of bounds to your right she said well there's a lot of sand traps out there <laughs> so in other words um, the advantage we you know golfers have over us is they can see those sand traps and try to work around them unfortunately you have to read your ball reaction to try and find where those spots of oil are well, Michelle Mullen converts the spare. Is that confidence we see on Tammy Turner's face? You'll have to wait till we come back. We're back now in the championship match of the $60,000 Rocket City Challenge. We're at AMF Pin Palace. And Tammy Turner can increase her lead here to 21 with a strike here in the fifth. And she does it. And Dana Miller Mackey is down with Kim Adler to discuss life on the road. Kim, we understand that you're part of our motorhome crew out in the back. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, we bought a new motorhome uh, in March. We had one in January previous to that. Uh, the brand new one's got a slide-out living room, dining area. It's great. And we do a lot of, um, we just park it behind the bowling center and it works out great. Well, and also I understand that you're a collector of glass apples. Can you tell me about that? I started that about three years ago, and uh, it's built up to about 15 to 20 of them. I have even a Waterford crystal apple that my husband got me for Christmas. So um, I always like to look at a, each city that we go to uh, looking for a new glass apple. Thanks for stopping by. Back to you, Leila. Thanks, Dana. Thanks, Kim. It's back to work now for Tammy Turner. She has left a four pin, came up a little high in that shot. Still leads though by 20 pins. Michelle Mullins got her work cut out for her. And Tammy, as you notice, is changing balls for all of her spares. She also flattens them out. And she's worked at that. A lot of the ladies now are starting to do that more and more. Both players with very consistent television pair averages. Both of them averaging 199 exactly. Her real carry. Michelle Mullen has a great statistic for the championship match. She's been there six times, and she's won three out of the six times she's been there. And yet she's only made, well, 17 career television appearances. Well, Michelle's a, you know, there are certain conditions Michelle really excels on, and she's on top all the time, and, and there are certain conditions she doesn't. Um, but she does have a very consistent game, and she's always up there cashing. Yeah, she... She makes it to the top. She obviously is very good at winning because 50% is a good percentage. It's, it's tough to win from the top seed. Well, halfway through the match, Michelle Mullen trailing by 21, but there's still time.
comes up light on lane 27. That has been the mystery lane for Michelle. Yeah, that's obviously why she chose to finish on lane 28. She's uh, not getting the ball to finish on 27 right now. Started bowling when she was 14 years old. Chops the 2-4 off the 5, and you know she's disappointed. She already has one second place finish this year. And I mentioned earlier how tough that spare was this week when Kim Adler was so happy that she picked it up. Uh, it, it is a tough spare. She changed balls, tried to go straight at it, but it was hard this week to pick those up. And Tammy Turner sees the victory, knows it's close. She leads by 35, taking an extra deep breath. And this time she jumped all over the opening as opposed to when Marianne left the 710 and came back and opened in return. This time she got right on it and if she didn't have that confidence like you mentioned going to break, I, I'm sure she's getting it now. Oh. Solid nine again. This is something that we see a lot now with these hooking balls, the resin balls. They just drive so hard through the pocket. There is no deflection there. You know, it's interesting the different lines these players are playing because Tammy has the ball finishing a little bit too hard on lane 27. So did Kim Adler leaving a solid seven and a solid four. But now Michelle, the ball's coming up light for her on lane 27. Is Michelle playing, is playing deeper? Yes, she is deeper. And they must be tighter in there. Comparatively, the lanes themselves, 27 must be tighter that deep than 28. And can Michelle move out? Would you suggest you think she should move out a little bit? Or? Boy, she's stayed there all week. I, I don't think she's going to do it. It's a tough change to make when you led the tournament doing one thing. Ah, carry the light hit. You know, Michelle is on Ebonite's staff. It was a light hit. We're going to take a look anyway. See how it came between the third and fourth arrows, about 17th board, finishing real light, just tripping the seven off the wall. Ball really never looked like it turned over, sliding. 35 pin lead now for Tammy Turner. And as I mentioned, Michelle Abenite, ball staff, all of our players tonight were on staff. Uh, Carolyn and Michelle both on Abenite and Tammy and Kim both on Brunswick. And you mentioned Marianne being on AMF staff. And I know the frustration that this lady is feeling right now. For those of you at home, she is not making the same shot. She is trying to make adjustments on this lane, and they just aren't working. I definitely think with the lanes being the way they were and how you mentioned in the opening uh, with all the balls that it had to be a disadvantage to be the top seed tonight. Oh. Here, Tammy Turner has come up through three matches. Had to feel very comfortable now in this pair. Definitely. And Michelle has to come out in, in you know, her eight warm-up shots. She has to figure out exactly where she's going to play and what she's going to do. And really, she wasn't confident yesterday in where she played. Mm, leaves the baby split, the 310. And with all those balls that we saw earlier to choose from, with eight practice balls, it's not a lot of time to pick the right ball. No, it's not. Now Tammy's going to take, go to her other ball. She's going to try and flatten this ball out so the ball will slide to the right, hit the right side of the three pin and deflect into the ten pin. If she spares, she wins it. And she does. She says, yes, she knows it. You can tell she's smiling now. Michelle Mullen looks at the scoreboard. It's championship number two for this lady. She won in her first year out as a rookie. She has just now won in her second year. And it's been a struggle for her, like we talked about earlier. She has only made half of the finals this year. And now to pop in a win there, that's got to add some confidence to your game. And that did it. She only needed four pins on that shot. Tammy Turner, the winner here at the AMF Pin Palace. And six pins sits in the channel, but it doesn't matter at this point. Highest finish so far this year was third. 
in the $60,000 California Classic. But now she has topped that third place finish with a win here tonight. Says yes. Michelle Mullen, second, second of the year. She takes home $5,400. She says, yeah, sure. They're all go going to go now. Oh, and tears of joy. Well, we'll be back to talk with our champion and the rest of the crew here at the Rocket City Challenge. Don't go away. The general manager here at AMF Pin Palace, Jeff. Congratulations, Tammy. You bowled really well all week long and we had confidence all the way. Uh, on behalf of Pin Palace and all the bowling fans in Alabama, I'd like to present you this trophy as a 1995 Rocket City Champion. Congratulations. Well, thank you. All right, and to come in with the check, the big money, $10,800, George Kyle Carlisle, the uh, cluster manager here for AMF. George? Thank you very much. Uh, Tammy, uh, I know the trophy's pretty, but the stuff that really spins is $10,800 on behalf of Samstown and LPVD champion, the tournament. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoyed having you here this week. Thank Hope you. Hope to see you back next year. I'd like, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to thank Jeff and Timmy McCorvey for being nice last year and this year and George and the staff here at Pin Palace. And also I wanted to send a special thanks to the Huntsville Women's Bowling Association and the leagues in Huntsville for being just great hosts for us all week. Thank you. Jan, I know you have a question for Tammy. Tammy, you told me earlier that it's been a dream since you were nine years old um, to be one of the best out here on tour and you're finding out now what it takes to be the best. What does it take? A lot of luck, that's for sure. <laughs> Any hard work? A little bit here and there, yeah, but the break's got to go your way and everything has to come together at once for you to get to the top. You've made a lot of changes, Tammy. Um, I know just in your thought process now, what are some of the things that helped you? Well, I, I think I need to stop settling for just making the top 24 because I don't think any of the top ladies on tour ever settled for just getting a check and that should be one of your goals to the top but um i'm just going to keep striving and striving and do the best i can and that's all i can do obviously one of the goals have to be bowler of the year right well maybe not this year but i'll give it a go <laughs> how's that shoulder injury doing it's doing okay um i've been maintaining it pretty good i take care of myself a lot better than i did a year ago so i think it's going to be okay what happened on a couple of those shots on uh, lane 28, uh, one kind of sail, did, did you just lose it or? Well, the, usually the first couple of shots of every match on TV, I'm just really nervous and um, I double dribble every time in the first few frames it seems, but I get nervous and I get real fast with my feet and I just, I hit my ankle on the one shot. It's nerves. Well, you performed well in the clutch though. Thank God. Tammy, you bowled Michelle Mullen uh, prior for tournament victory. How did? Did you think about that? It was the first thing I thought of, and I was going to make a joke about it before we started, but then I realized I didn't think she'd find it very funny. <laughs> All right, congratulations to the newest champion of the Rocket City Challenge. For Jan Schmidt and Dana Miller Mackey, I'm Leila Wagner. Don't forget to join us in Ocean Springs, Mississippi for the Samstown Tunica Classic. So long, everyone.